Hello and welcome to Exclusive here on France 24. Our exceptional guest today is the 14th Dalai Lama, the spiritual leader of the Tibetan Buddhists. He won the Nobel Peace Prize exactly 25 years ago. Your Holiness, thank you very much for uh, being on the show. Thank you. Uh, Your Holiness, uh, you have been advocating relentlessly uh, for Tibet across the world, especially uh, in the West. On the other hand, uh, the Chinese government has been pressuring governments, world leaders, not uh, to receive you, not to pay attention to the Tibetan uh, cause. And it seems more and more difficult for you. In Rome, uh, the Pope has not granted you Uh, an interview. Uh, you were uh, recently uh, refused uh, a meeting by the Norwegian uh, Prime Minister, uh, despite having had many meetings with the West. Is it getting more and more difficult to have Western governments listen to you and meet with you? Actually, not, because uh, uh, since uh, Uh, 2001, I already uh, semi-retired position. Then, particularly 2011, I completely retired from political responsibility. So wherever I go, I my main interest is meeting with the public. So the government leader, if they find okay, then I'm happy. If they feel little inconvenience. That no problem, including his holiness pope, no problem. But aren't you disappointed? You praise Pope Francis. Many people uh, praise him for his awareness yes. of the poor, of the lost causes. Yes. And then he refuses uh, to meet with you. I mean, frankly speaking, oh. you must be disappointed somehow. No, not much. Of course, a little bit curiosity. Why <laughs> like that? <laughs> so why? No, 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 no problem. What, so what's your answer? Why do you think he has uh, not granted you an audience? I have no answer. You should ask Bob or his administration. You think it's pressure from China that is also working? I, with think, I think quite obvious. There's no problem. What about uh, Western uh, governments? Uh, they've received you no less problem. and less. Recently, I was in Norway. Unlike previous meeting, the government official they say, avoid meeting me. I feel all right. I have nothing to ask. But is it, all right for, is it all right for the Tibetan cause? Because it seems that Western governments the are Western not... The Western gov government themselves also cannot do much. <laughs> Public opinion, very important. As I mentioned earlier, the preservation, uh, I mean, uh, promotion of human value, promotion of religious harmony, Public are the most important, sort of, uh, uh, most important. So these things... You see, government, you see, cannot, cannot do much promotion of human value or religious harmony. Of course, some extent government can do, but mainly public, individual, individual. Uh, then regarding Tibet, since I completely retired political responsibility, now my main sort of uh, commitment is uh, preservation of Tibetan culture, culture of peace, culture of nonviolence, culture of compassion. That, I think, uh, the Chinese brothers and sisters really need that kind of culture. Look, so much so was the gap, rich and poor, and immense corruption. And the poor people, I met quite a number of occasions, some Chinese peasant from remote area, or oh, very difficult, it's the farmers, these people. So therefore, the preservation of Tibetan uh, Buddhist culture, uh, culture of peace, culture of compassion is very important. The French president, François Hollande, is there any plan to meet with him? He had, uh, as a host, uh, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, for a major state visit a couple uh, of months ago. Yes. Do you have any hopes that he will meet you? Or because China is investing a lot in France right now and is putting pressure on France, do you think that, like uh, others, he will say, well, the Dalai Lama, I'm not meeting with him because it will displease Beijing? Hmm. Any individual human being, if you keep too much hope, then greater disappointment come. So better not hope. Just whatever you see, what happened, accept that. No problem. No problem. Uh, Xi Jinping's uh, visit 
when he was in France, he publicly you know, expressed Buddhism have very important role regarding preservation of Chinese culture and the promotion of Chinese culture. And a similar statement, similar sort of expression in Delhi also. So this is something unusual. A communist, usually we consider atheist. So the leader of the atheist party, uh, traditionally, you see, there, is, there was, you see, many records deliberately tried to eliminate the religious faith. So now there's the very party, uh, very party sort of had praising about Buddhism is something new, something is, is unusual. It, would you describe it as revolutionary? I, I say, I, I, I usually say realistic. After all, culture, any country, uh, not newly invented, but thousand years uh, that culture, you see, uh, exists. So it helped, and that culture, any nation, any area, culture, you see, gradually or through evolution, you see, develop, not particular man-made. So therefore, culture, any culture, the concerning local people, or that, that people, very, very fit, very suitable. So therefore, the Chinese culture, I think very, one of the very ancient culture, is suitable to Chinese people. Like the Cultural Revolution, deliberately tried to eliminate, impossible. So now, revive very strongly China, interest about Chinese culture, uh, including Buddhism. Very, very rapidly, now today, According to some Chinese, uh, I think three, 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 four years ago, one Chinese uni in Peking University carried a survey how many Buddhists in China. Uh, then, you see, they say about over, over 300 million of Buddhist population. Many of these Buddhists are educated people. It report, you see, mentioned that. Uh, then, the last a few years, many Chinese Buddhists they told me, uh, they told us, uh, now Buddhist population in China, over 400 million. So do you think that the new Chinese president, you've described him as a realist, which I understand is a compliment uh, yes. for you, as open-minded, mm -hmm. just for our viewers, uh, talks with China, official talks, mm -hmm. have been stopped since 2010. Do you think that he is someone who is ready to discuss with uh, Tibet about granting this uh, genuine autonomy that you've been calling for many years. Do you think he can be the man to do this? Well, now I should use hope. I hope so. <laughs> but are, are there any indications? So there, are, there are some indications. The, as I mentioned earlier, see his public sort of expression, he appreciate the Buddhist. He said they have the responsibility regarding preservation of Chinese culture, he publicly sort of mentioned. And then some of his friend, close friend, also, you see, uh, see, see, you see, he more, uh, I'll say, the realistic thinking. But at the same time, among the establishment, there's a lot of hardliner thinking still there. So he himself, you see, uh, sometimes find difficult situation. Although outwardly totalitarian system, the leader can decide. But the reality, unlike Mao Zedong or Deng Xiaoping, uh, last uh, two former president, you see, uh, not much active. Now this uh, president, quite active and realistic. Uh, however, you see the old thinking very much well trenched. So you see change, uh, difficult, a uh, lot, of, lot, lot of difficulties, so not, not easy. So we'll see. Are there informal? We'll see. Uh, and I always you see, consider uh, Chinese people very important. So whenever we have opportunity meeting with Chinese intellectuals, writers, uh, farmers, uh, Say, obviously, yes, the uh, Chinese peoples. I think one example. Last, I think, about now, 
three, four years, we noticed about 1,000 articles in Chinese language, wrote by Chinese. All 1,000 articles fully support about our course, our middle way approach, and very critical, their own government policy. Can so I these are the clear indications. Then the one Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize, sort of Nobel laureate, Liu Xiaobo. Who is in jail? Uh, uh, still in jail, but publicly, so it was very supportive. Like him, many Chinese intellectuals openly sort of criticize the Chinese government's policy and support us. Are there informal talks, uh, there have been rumors in recent months that there have been discussions about you uh, going on a pilgrimage uh, to a sacred mountain in uh, Tibet. You oh, said- in China, China, China. Yeah, in, oh. in China, sorry. Yes. Oh. Uh, is this- I mean, mainly, mainly in China, yes. Yes, oh. yes, sorry. Uh, is this still going on? Is there a hope that you might go on a pilgrimage to China because obviously you haven't yes. been there for my, many decades? my desire, you see, uh, so pilgrimage and some of the important Buddhist sites in China proper, and eventually including Tibet. Of course, as a Buddhist monk, I have that keen desire. What about uh, Beijing? So, so few occasion, I expressed to the Chinese government. Uh, and previously, they say, oh well, uh, uh, I say they, I say, even, even though, you see, say, uh, non-political, just simply spiritual pilgrimage, uh, but still, with the name of Dalai Lama, some political implication there, they say, now I completely retired from political responsibility. Uh, so, let us see. Now, recently, uh, although you see, I express, you see this publicly, as well as some uh, individual uh, friends, Chinese friends, uh, so recently, you see some mixed signal. Some officials, you see, say favorable. Some officials say negative. So I don't know. A little bit of confusion there. <laughs> this would be a, obviously a major development if you were allowed to go. Oh yes, so of China. course. But but we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There are no uh, indications. Uh, Chi Jin. So, so I think I think basically, you know, if I. Only think about Tibet, then there are a lot of cause, lot, lot of factor to create a disappointment. When I look humanity and religious harmony, then there is a lot of sort of lot of factor. You see, give me uh, hope and enthusiasm and want do more. Although now my age nearly eighty years, now time come almost now. Uh, complete rest, but still I'm quite active. It's, uh, as a human being, it's our moral duty to make, uh, no matter how small, to make some contribution for a better world, happier world, healthy world. I just want to go back to the situation uh, in Tibet. We've seen since several years a, a new phenomenon, self-immolations, I believe 133. Uh, some critics say you haven't firmly uh, condemned them. How worried, first of all, are you by this uh, phenomenon and what's your judgment on this? That's very sad, but this is very much political issue. Whatever I uh, make comment, very easily manipulate. And then also, uh, you see, it also is related with the family member who still uh, live. So it's my comment. Uh, also, is I have to sort of think very seriously. These people, one of their family members, sacrificed their own life. Uh, so it's not an easy thing, very serious matter. And under the present sort of delicate situation, best thing is kept quiet. Do you think there is a risk of radicalization by Tibetan youth who are saying the Dalai Lama has advocated for autonomy. The Chinese are saying, no, we're going nowhere. So we want independence and we want to advocate through more radical means. Are you concerned that there could be maybe violence in Tibet because no, the situation think. is blocked? I don't think. I don't think. Why not? There are many 
sort of cases. The very, very tense situation. Still, you see, people kept spirit of nonviolence. For example, I think uh, in 80, I think one sort of shooting took place. Some Chinese soldiers' gun fell in front of Tibetan. They simply crash on the spot, not use. So this clearly indicates that such a tense situation, they still remember nonviolence. So I have not much sort of worry. Uh, then, yes, uh, mainly outside Tibet, you see, they, uh, among the young people, they are naturally, you see, they are very, very, what say they, uh, very much concerned about Tibet. So you see, they, uh, too much emotion. So you see, they want, uh, so they, 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 I mean, they fight for complete independence. Sometimes they criticize our policy. Uh, but then overall, uh, many occasions, I ask them, you see, just, you see, shouting independence, independence, is not sufficient. You must sort of make plan, first step, second step, third step, fourth, fifth, like that. Uh, never produce such sort of systematic sort of method. So then, uh, many people feel this is just emotion. No sort of proper, realistic sort of method like that. And then, uh, so you see, there are, I think that also, I feel, you see, healthy sign. We fully committed democracy, freedom of expression, different expression, different views. It's helpful to think more. So like that, so therefore, I, I feel uh, Tibetan uh, generally, I think particularly inside Tibet, they really committed nonviolent principle. And also, uh, regarding middle of approach, we are not seeking independence. Many Tibetan, inside Tibet, intellectuals, students, uh, of course, those uh, people you see, who have not much sort of, how say they, uh, how say they, knowledge or wider knowledge, then just emotionally, well, uh, we are independent country like that. Uh, but those knowledgeable, sensible sort of Tibetan, I met uh, sort of uh, various sort of uh, different background, some religious, some business, some party member, some officials, uh, uh, some intellectuals, most of them fully support about midwife for approach. I want to ask you uh, about uh, your succession. You gave an interview to a German newspaper uh, two months ago in which mm -hmm. you indicated that you might be uh, the last uh, oh. Dalai Lama. Oh. And so many people are wondering, what did you mean? As you say, you don't have a political role uh, since 2011. You still have a spiritual role. So did you mean uh, there would be no f other Dalai Lama as a political leader or as both? As you know, I already mentioned uh, 2011. Uh, not only I myself retired, but also almost four century old tradition. Dalai Lama institution, since fifth Dalai Lama, Dalai Lama institution automatically become head of both temporal and spirituality. Now that formally, voluntarily, happily, proudly ended. Now future Dalai Lama, uh, no political role, only through election. So there will be a, a new so, spiritual... So, so that's... So the Chinese officials, I think, more concerned about the future Dalai Lama than me. I have no, no concern. <laughs> as early as 60, uh, I think, uh, I think 69, 69, I think, I publicly sort of express the very institution of Dalai Lama should continue or not up to Tibetan people. If at that time, when, when my end come, and then around that period, you see, majority of Tibetan people feel now Dalai Lama, the uh, few century old sort of tradition, now not much relevant, then automatically cease. I have no concern. So what you want is Beijing not to decide the future Dalai Lama. This is your main goal right now. Well, morally speaking, <laughs> they are non-believer. <laughs> so sometimes I jokingly telling, the Chinese communist, I think 
First, they should recognize Chairman Mao Zedong's Rohingya nation. Then, Ding Xiaoping's Rohingya nation. Then, they have certain right to concern about the Dalai Lama's Rohingya nation. Right. I, I Otherwise, you see, illogical. The, the last uh, question I want to come to, uh, obviously, uh, we've seen uh, violence by Buddhist monks in uh, Burma against the Rohingya uh, minority. Uh, you've condemned them. Are, are you uh, worried about this new uh, trend in Bu Buddhism, or do you think it's an isolated phenomenon? I think, I think isolated. I had, you see, a serious discussion about this uh, with another Nobel laureate, Aung San Suu Kyi. Uh, so, you see... She's uh, uh, not been very vocal on this issue, by the way. Uh, she now... Uh, very much involved politics. <laughs> so she a little bit sort of uh, uh, cautious, make certain comment. Uh, but actually, you see, I had a discussion with her. So this is, I think, uh, not entire Buddhist community, same view. No, I don't think. So in any way, it is quite a serious matter. Now, today, in the name of religious faith, violence take place. It's terrible. Violence, killing uh, for different interests of political interest or economy interest or power interest, understandable. Killing in the name of God, in the name of religion, unthinkable, unthinkable. So then some Buddhist group also now indulge, you see, uh, harming uh, people from different faith. Very, very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. What about Islam? Uh, you've, meant, you've said uh, the beheadings that we've seen of uh, hostages was the biggest threat against humanity. At the same time, you, you say we need to dialogue with uh, those hostage takers, those terrorists. Uh, yeah, that's the only way. Only way. They, yesterday, some Nobel laureate also is mentioned, you see, we need some, someone, you see, who, may, who really sort of, the contract, make contract. So that's very true. See, two groups and remain distance and criticize, sometimes the use, including violence, won't solve the problem. Recently, in Delhi, I met some French, I uh, the media. Uh, so I sort of express, as usual, these uh, killer, I, 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 I described as a human brother, sisters. Truly, these are brothers. Even See, if they kill, if they behead, if they behead they're people? They're still human beings. Oh. But isn't I there a problem with Islam today? No, I don't think, no. The, um, I have many close friends among the uh, Muslim. So they say, Genuine Islam practitioner should not create any bloodshed. If the person creates bloodshed, no longer genuine practitioner of Islam. And then also the very word jihad. Jihad is combat your internal destructive emotion, not harming other. So some Islam professors I had some discussion and some practitioner like that. So then, like some of these was a Buddhist, is it too much emotion? Then, you see, the religion uh, become instrument of their destructive emotion like that. Okay, last question, uh, Your Holiness. Are you hoping uh, that in your lifetime you will see a genuinely autonomous Tibet? I think so. I think so. Things are changing. Although now my age, uh, as I mentioned earlier, now like nearly now 80. Uh, but I think these are political matter. So political change, if the leadership or concerned people, you see, they develop new realistic sort of thinking, then these things within weeks can change. Your Holiness, thank you very much for granting us uh, an interview here on France 24. Thank you all for watching it. Stay tuned here for more news.